later than normal um, because Big talk vassal <laughs> but we're back um, this is our party episode Woo! Arte. Woo! Yay. <laughs> it's a highlight okay. already from Sam Yay. <laughs> there's a lot of party games out in the world they're really I mean if you go to your where you buy games you know Toys R Us whatever you will find group games basically grouped and games that are ripoffs of the latest TV show or movie mm -hmm. Games that have always been in existence, like Monopoly and Scrabble, and party games. Party games come and go. Some are good and some are bad. Um, I, some are weaker versions of other party games, but we're here to tell you the 10 best. Or as we normally do, a whole lot more than 10. So Top 19-ish. <laughs> this is the top. We're going to do 18. 18. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll do our top 10. But before we do that, we'll do some of ours each that did not make the list. So we will start with me for once. And I'm going to talk about Ultimate Werewolf. Werewolf for me is a really good party game. Uh, I don't think Sam likes Werewolf. Or... No, I like it. I just don't like running it. Ah, well, I love moderating Werewolf or Mafia. They're, you know, they're coming out with an Ultimate Mafia now. That's right, I saw that. For uh, people who don't like werewolves. Um, but just the, the good thing about Werewolf is, is that it works with 40 people. Or, uh, well, well, okay. well uh, that's, you, you got to put that in quotes. It works with 40 people. What's the biggest group we've ever played that with? 55. How long did that take? Yeah, it was. It doesn't work with 55. No, it doesn't work <laughs> the with The game broke down either. after a while. I mean, I, I, I enjoy Werewolf. I love it, but I don't want to play with more than about 20, 25 people. Yeah. I, that, I, you're asking for, I mean, oh, oh, you're asking for it. There is like a sweet spot. <clears throat> like 15 or 16 is really, I think, where it's best at. Yeah. But it is a game that can be introduced, and you don't need a lot of... Uh, I mean, the Ultimate Werewolf is my favorite version, but you don't even need this. You can play with any any version of the game, just marking cards and such. It's It works best at night. It works best at conventions. If you have friends over at your house, it may or may not work. I've seen people who just could not grasp the concept Sure, sure. It's werewolf. definitely a mood game. You have to... If you set up the mood right, you treat it as, uh, as what it wants to be. It's uh, it can make for a really fun time, but you're right. If you just launch right into it from an atmosphere that doesn't warrant the game, it it, it could very well bomb. Yeah. My other one is reverse charades. Reverse charades is I have little boxes here that you can get. I'm not a big fan of charades, even though every sitcom I've ever seen, the people in it end up playing charades at some point, and one person's really good at guessing stuff after about five seconds. Yep. Um, but charades is not that fun to play in real life. I, I don't think because some people cannot act and it can become a boring affair or you can sit there for a, a long time trying to figure out what the person's doing. For some people they hate it because they stand up and they're awkward. Reverse charades lets you get up in groups and act out things together. Be a big awkward group. It 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 isn't though. Once you're in a group people don't feel as as bad about acting stuff out. You This is one of my favorite convention games too. It you wouldn't think that some of the funniest moments of my life have been seeing people Reenact certain scenes like giving birth, or um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a group of men demonstrating on how to give birth can be a very hilarious thing when done in reverse charades. You're not feeling it. I, I'd just like to point out that he has the girls' night in edition. I'm just here to show all the all the versions. I have a holiday edition and sports edition too. Sports. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I have six girls. Oh, okay. Sam hit it. <laughs> you should explain your thoughts on I'm not games. following that. You, you go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Girls' Night In edition. Uh, All right. Sam go. Well, well, I, werewolf. Girls' Night In. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the land of normality. Uh, we have Apples to Apples. Probably one of the... I would, safe pick. I would say one of the most popular games that are, that's in existence right now. Oh, yeah. For party games, it's probably in the top five. <laughs> um, you can get this almost anywhere... I think I even saw this at the dollar store. Could be wrong. I don't know, but I but definitely it was, seen it all over. It the was place. a little rinky-dink place, and I, I don't remember exactly what kind of store it was. But I've seen Target, Walmart. 
um, all of your your big major chains. Um, yeah, and there's tons of addition. Yeah, there's Editions a whole bunch also. of addition uh, additions as well. A lot of expansions. A lot of. I mean, this is just kind of a you know real simple. You all have red apple cards, and you have to, uh, which are the uh, what do you call them? I hate English nouns. Okay, yes, the red cards are the nouns, <laughs> and the Famous. green cards the are the descriptors. The green, the green cards are the descriptors, and you have to play red cards that match the descriptors. And usually, like girls' night in Tom Vassal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Win. Usually, though, what I have seen happen is that it devolves, devolves into that too. That too. Yeah, both <laughs> of them. It devolves into. Um, playing a card that you know the person is going to think is funny. And that's actually one of the things that I like about the game. You have different ways to play it, and I like to play it to where you try to make the person laugh. Yeah, you get the yeah, person yeah. laughing, the more than likely pick yours. Or Unless some people just pick, the mud. pick whatever they like. Well, I know that this is the card people expect me to pick, but I'm going to pick well, this I'm one. I'm going to pick that one. So. Well, definitely, whenever I play it, there's a rule in there that the last person to pick a card... Isn't doesn't have their card counted, and I always eliminate that rule because then what happens is basically everybody just <laughs> just throws one. It doesn't even matter. They right. could, they randomly throw no one. No thought in. into and it. And then at the all. game devolves at that point. I only do that when there's that one really slow player. Whoa! But how slow can they be? There's yeah, like six cards in your slow. hand. Ah! It's come on now, come on. You've what? met people before who could slow it down. They could. Okay, you're right. <laughs> He's I'm right. just, I'm he's just right. saying. He's right. Okay, he's right. Take that back. Yeah, okay. Oh. <laughs> I put the thought in their heads. <laughs> I usually play without that rule as well. Yeah. Because, yeah, I do too. Because it's just not worth it. It, it puts a, a level of stress to the game that doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's apples, apples. One of the guys, one of the games that just didn't make the list. Vocabulary. We talked about this on uh, one of our other lists. What? Are we, what when are we talking about this? Games that sound as stupid, but really are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Still so basically, you take you take these cubes and you roll them, and they have different uh, syllables of words. Maybe we could put it that way. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, but we can show the actual ones here. Go ahead and keep yeah. talking. So anyway, you roll it, you, you, you roll it, and you you have then on on the face die on the top face of the of the die Excuse a bunch of uh, a bunch of parts of a word. And so you make up your own word, and then you have to give it a definition. You okay. you, you can rotate them if you want. Okay. I'm going to call myself uh, Old Puffing. Old Puffing. That's my word. Subitation. Subitation. And subation, so don't add an extra Sub syllable. Yes. Oh. But anyway. Subitation. <laughs> it works. So you now give a, a, a definition. This is what we call a baseball cap worn on formal occasions. Yes. <laughs> so it's... It's a subitation. you It's sword. a really... Sorry? It's a really fun game that, that you can have a lot of fun with. You have a lot of crazy words come out. And, and it just starts... It starts... Uh, there's just a lot of laughing <laughs> involved uh, whenever whenever we played this in the past. So And that's what uh, that's what has to happen for a party game for me. There has to be a lot of laughing. So uh, that's vocabulary. That one I haven't played. I don't know. It, what I do like, though, is that it encourages what you were talking about, which is group think in a party. Mm -hmm. Like, the jokes will evolve as yeah. the... As the game goes on, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a thumbs up for that. All right. I got My one games. more. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have it. You don't have the box. That's why it threw me off. That's why. Hit it. Cineplexity. Cineplexity. Let's go to the movies! Is a, is a, game, is a game about movies, party game about movies, where you, you take uh, two cards, and one card will say something like romance, and another card will say something like a place, or uh, a kind of actor. So you'll have, like, romance in New York, and then you have to think of movies that I can't think have of both of those things that oh, really a romance movie directed by uh, Tarantino. That's that's <laughs> non-existent. Um, so you have to think of. Tango was a love story. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, they're not all winners. You have you keep throwing me off, man. Well, that's actually what happens in Cineplex. Yes, yeah, exactly. It is a game where you. I think you play the game and then there's a, about a three minute argument over whether that that movie fit that. You're picking a real film, is what you're doing in the yeah. game. Yes. Okay. So um, I'm a big movie buff. I, I like watching movies. I I have usually had a a sizable movie collection in my house. You know that type of stuff. So this is the kind of game that uh, I if it's a 
the the subject matter is what made it for me. Mm -hmm. If it was the same mechanics about any you know some other kind of subject like right. not movies, I probably wouldn't like it. It is limiting though in that regard. Yeah, it is for people who aren't huge movie buffs. It can right. really throw them off. Sure. Then you also have to go in. There's parameters, you know, because um, if you play it with a group of people that <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Have, <laughs> He's thinking about a certain experience we a had. A rather <laughs> large, a larger spectrum of movies that they watch. You'll have a lot of movies mentioned that you probably didn't want mentioned in mixed groups or what have you. Um, so you have to be careful that way. True yeah. story. True story. True story. <laughs> be careful with Cineplexity because there will be a no, lot. No, I don't know that that would happen very often. I think that was ice. There, there will be a lot of. Really weird it out. There right? will be a lot of. No, not in this room. It's. No, know, I know, I know. It's somebody else. Strange. We should do a top 10 strange stories of gaming. That there will be a lot of correct answers that maybe shouldn't be. <laughs> okay. Said. Let's, let's talk about your three. So, moving on to Z. Okay, moving on to nice, polite games. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Because this one cannot be, can be that, that way too. Yes, it can. Isn't there a the secret envelope in this <clears> one? <throat> no, not in, no. It wasn't the original one. There was a. Uh, a card, like I said, adult gifts, basically. Oh, okay. They've now spun it off, I think, into its own version of gift trap. Okay, it yeah, comes this, in multiple that's not versions. That's yeah. But this one's basically, it's a gift trap, and the, the way the game works is um, you lay out the board, you put out gifts, and everybody is shopping for everybody else. You give everybody else one of the gifts available, and then you receive gifts as well from everybody, and you pick what you would like to get. And if they gave you a gift you wanted, you go up on the getting, getting scale, and if you gave gifts that people want it, you go up on the giving scale. This is a great party game uh, in mixed groups, women and men, in mixed uh, age groups, it works well. Um, just the vibe that, as soon as you set up the game, it's really gorgeous, it comes with the little um, gift bags as you're playing bits. So as soon as you set up the game... Okay, you were getting on me about Girls Night In, and you're just, just shh, showing up... Just shh. Yeah, ahead. but I don't pick this color, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, as soon as you pull these out, people just are like, oh, okay, this is cute, you know, you got a little gift bag, and you open it up, and your bits are in there to play with. I remember the first time I showed it to you, and you were, Sam was not that way, he was like, well, I, I wasn't, what are we playing? Exactly. What is this game? Uh, it's, a, again, great game to play with the girlfriend, wife, crowd, it's it's a wonderful little party game. It's a good icebreaker. Apparently you need a master's you know, degree to put it back yeah, in the box. Well, that, that is a, I actually don't like the box. I mean, I think it's a cool it's idea. It's a cute idea, it's very novel, you know. But you're right, it's a great icebreaker, exactly. Because you don't know much about someone, you'll learn about him in this game. Oh, so you think going on a hiking trip is a horrible mm -hmm, gift, mm -hmm. while getting a visit from a mime, and the gifts are, the gifts are, you know, they have... The super expensive ones, right, the, and then they have yeah, categories kind of junky price. Ones. Yeah, yeah. And so you just pick one of the categories and play with it. So that's a fun one. All right, next, Pow Wow. Um, pow Wow is like kind of like Indian poker, where you have a card, you put it on your head, and then uh, in this game, you're attempting to figure out what the total of the table is. And so you're saying, you know, everybody will put a feather on their head. They have a number or some kind of modifier, and you might say, okay, I think there's at least ten among all of us. And the next person either ups that total or says there's no way there's ten, we reveal them all, and figure out who was right, who was wrong. It's a lot like the game that Tom is reaching for called Coyote. I'm wondering if it's the exact same game. I think it is the same game. Is. However, mine has really cool feathers! And they go on. Oh yeah, this is that Tom Hawks? No. And also, feathers! Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Back off! Does yours have headbands? Yes! This is now we're like, it's more like children. <laughs> Alright. Boom! <laughs> Vassal, I can never beat them! Alright, All right. let's get So, um, yeah, this is a really cool Oh, one. it is a fun game, though, because you're sitting there and you know everybody's thing except your own. Yeah, it's like a party game meets a push your luck game. Meets a mathy game. And then you're like looking, you know, you always can psych people out when you look at their head and you're like, oof, oh, ooh, okay. And they're like, what? what is, what's on my forehead, you know? So, that's a fun one. The, and the, the that, I've, t I've played this a heck of a lot and it's it always goes over well. People just like that game. And lastly, here. Liar's Dice, good old Liar's Dice, Peruto, whatever you want to call it. Um, Playing this, Pirates of the Caribbean 2. That's right. This was my college game. This was the one we basically knocked out every day 
And... You went to college? Okay, <laughs> sorry, go on. My high school game... <laughs> played this in middle school a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's not nice. Um... <laughs> What was I gonna say? No, you threw me off. You yeah. played it all the time in college, and you know. And it's yeah, still, I mean, I still love it. It's still one of my top ten games ever. Anyway, um, everybody probably knows how to play Pirates Dice or Liars Dice or whatever you want to call it. Awesome game. I love it. It did not make the list because Tom Vassell makes these lists. <laughs> oh, no, no, uh, no. No, listen. I compile the list together. I give 20 points to the num your number one place, the 19 to your second place. Give away the secret, man. Okay, then I compile them all together. So, nobody cares. Let's just... All right, let's hit this top ten. Make, make sure you understand that we both had three not on the list. He only had two. Let's move on. All right, we're playing guns here, and Ninja Star... I hit the camera. It's awful. <laughs> What, my aim? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Caching guns, it doesn't, it actually doesn't come with these black guns. This was the uh, Polish version, or the Czech version, I believe. The the actual um, the US, one US has version orange, is orange. Just like these. Are these illegal? Probably in a lot of places. Okay. Caching guns is a game in which you basically, each turn of the game, you're pointing guns at other people, and your gun may or may not be loaded, and you're fighting for a pile of money in the middle of the table. That's basically the whole game. You only have so many bullets, though, and so you have to decide when's the best time to do them and when to psych people out. If you buy the expansion, you add the Yakuza, and then you play on teams, and you can play up to... The original game goes up to... Six, I think, and the expansion, six, up expansion to nine. expansion goes up to nine. And they both work well, although they play differently. Yeah, it's a different vibe. With six, you know, you're shooting at anybody. Uh, the, the, other times you're working as a team, you know, against other people. You can even play where one person's a secret police officer... You can play with special abilities, which lets you have a shotgun. There's really a lot of variety in it, but it basically comes down to the fact that you can do a game and do this, and everyone laughs. Although and you don't know, it's a bluffing game, so you don't know if he's threatening you or not threatening you, and so you have to decide, okay, do I bail out and not get shot, or do I stick in because I know he's bluffing, bluffing game. That's pretty much it. It's a great party game. Though. I know, and I play with... You I play open with... this box up, and these things come out, and everybody's looking at you going, okay, buddy, did you re now you've really lost it. Yeah. We were playing board games first, now you're bringing out foam toys. But you get the game set up and get going, and, and by the end of the game, everybody's digging it. Yeah, you but know? by the end of the game, that mild old lady is going... Yeah, yeah, everybody's going, what, and trash talking, and, you know, <laughs> it definitely... Get, that vibe, you know, is, is right there. So this is this is uh was this on your list? Oh, this was on this yeah. was one of the well, this wasn't on my list, but it was probably top fifteen. Yeah, same here. It's this is one that I I I kind of quibble on what exactly is a party game. Right. And it's ah oh, this one. Yeah, I don't really know what the definition of a party game is. Sam says it's one that brings out a lot of laughter. That's definitely that what this does. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Do you got any? Nope. That's it. You don't. So why is this a party game and? And what? I don't know. All these other games on the shelves aren't. Why make it harder? Okay. Fine. <laughs> well, <I thought laughs> Let's move on to number nine. Oh, you want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. It's a party game because you can play it at a party. I'm just kidding. That's no. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like circular. I was, I was putting together a, a counterattack uh, regarding uh, Kalis, and, and Puerto Rico might have been in there. Oh, good. Don't make me talk about Kalis. But that's not going to any parties. If I knew that. Is you say if you have Kalis, it's not a party anymore. I'm not coming. It's not. A party I agree anymore. with you there, Sam. It's not a party anymore. Anyway, um, guns might come out. I think laughter has to, is is an essential thing. You have to be able to. You can't. Um. Uh, be too worried about having to put too much thought into any certain part of the game. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I mean. I think that's what makes a party game a party game. It's a light game that everybody can have fun at. Okay. See, for me, party games it's it's hard to categorize that when you're talking about mechanics or you're talking about components or you're talking about anything like that. For me, it's What's the vibe that develops when this game is being played? And yes, for some people, a party game 
and the way they play that game, that game might not be a party game to a different crowd, a different group. You know? I, tr I bet there's people who play this game and it is not a party game. Because they take it too seriously. <laughs> I wouldn't play with that game with those people. Exactly, then. that's true. But I bet they exist. You yeah. know what I mean? So that category is only useful to yourself, you know? Non-tournament games are party games. I can't see anybody playing a tournament. Of yeah, but I could. I would play the tournament of Liar's Dice. Do you want to... College champ, baby! You <laughs> Were you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to number nine. Who do you trust? Now this is a game that if you really want it, you can go to a thrift store and there's a good chance you'll find a copy of this. That's where I got my copy. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Each person in this game gets a deck of cards that has a bunch of pictures on it. Um, all And some of them are just words like help and stress, but others will show weird pictures. And everyone has the same deck. Mm -hmm. And so you are working with a partner usually in this game. or. I think your, your partner switches as the game goes by. No, right? no, it depends how many people you play with. Normally, the best way to play the game is in groups, preferably in pairs, preferably somebody you're with, and then it's perfect, right? And so you can play six, or you can play four, two couples or three couples. And you reveal one card, you roll a die, it tells you a category. Uh, Empire is the category. And then you go through your entire deck, which matches everyone else's, and you pick the top five or four cards that make you think... Empire. It's fairly abstract. That's kind of the point. It's to see how you think. And then you line those cards up from the strongest association to the weakest association. You compare with your partner. You get points if you directly match. You get more if you indirectly match. You get some. That's basically the game. But what I love about the game is that it just, the, the, it makes you, it's really neat just to kind of go through a deck, have this really abstract word, and then you flip your cards, they flip theirs, and you go, aha! Yeah, I don't, I'm not so insane after all. This is not so weird after all. We matched on half. You know, that's what does it for me. This is probably my favorite party game. This is going to be the favorite, really? my favorite game on the list. This is my number one. Wow. I mean, I like it, but I, I wow. Yeah, it's just that, that, you know, comparing and seeing how you think and understanding why people picked something just does it for me. It's, you know, it's a psychology thing, maybe. I just love seeing that come through. I like that, too, but I think there's a better game that does it that we will get to shortly. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Also, I found out they reprinted this game not that long ago, quoted what I said on Board Game Geek on the back of the box, and it is attributed to Board Game ah. Geek. Oh, it's not attributed to you? What's up? <laughs> I said that, baby! <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> it's Z Garcia on the Dice Tower. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> this party game just came out in 2012, but it's my choice for the best game of 2012, party game of 2012. Party game. Yeah, party game. <laughs> I really love playing this one. It's essentially this, a similar concept to compatibility. Yeah. You put out 11 pictures on the table, and then you're just supposed to pair those on a piece of paper. Any way you want. You might say, well, those are both red, or that's cow and that's milk, so those obviously go together. And then you try to see how many other people you match with your pairs. Yeah. And then there's one that's left out, the odd man out. And you're hoping that matched what the other people left as the odd man out. And what people do for this, the we played this at Dice Hour Convention last year, and I almost fell out of my chair laughing because we played with a mix of American-Spanish folks. <laughs> and the culture differences were really funny. Just that... Why would you ever think these two things go together? Yeah, yeah, and one guy thought, I was like, I don't understand American culture! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great party. That, 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 that game, which I, was the only time I played with you, I played afterwards on my, I know, with other groups, but that was the first time I think we both played. And just that, you know, the fact that, it, like you said, in compatibility, it's the same thing. It's, it's you, you're thinking, okay, this is obvious to me, and then you hear somebody else's comparison, you go, 
You're right. Oh, that makes sense. Well, yeah, I but I also hear someone else's comparison and go, what are you smoking? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Those don't come together about. at all. Yeah, that's true. But it's a great... <laughs> is this the one you're saying that does that better than compatibility? Yeah, for me, this replaces compatibility. Compatibility I still use in large groups. Mm -hmm. Like uh, at my youth group, sometimes I'll split the kids up into teams and give each a deck of cards. Okay. And then I'll say, you guys pick five things for your deck of cards, and you're trying to match... Like, I'll pick up an adult, and I'll say, this adult's going to pick five cards, and you guys are trying to match. What are they thinking for mm -hmm. love, you know, or whatever? And it works well in that situation, but that it's not as fun as this one for me. Uh, this was not, no, this was on my top ten, I think, but it was like nine or ten. This, this did not get anywhere near that. I think part of that is because the game plays a little slower for me. You know, when you have to, yeah, you have to write down the pairs, that's fine. You have to do that kind of in the other one, too, while you pick cards. But then comparing, you compare with everyone. So you're going, okay, this pair and this pair. You, no, you, no, you, yes, like you, you. It's that way. Yeah. And in the other game, it's us and you guys, and we're moving on. You know? All right. Hmm. Have I you think that's yet? part of it. Yes, I have. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> I want to thank Sam for being here today. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, it's... I, I mean, I, I get why you guys like it, um, but I think why you guys like it is why I don't like it. Because, see, this this would be pushing the line on too much brain power needed for a party game. Okay. I mean, it is a party game. I'm not contesting that. Mm -hmm. But for my taste, there's too much brain power going into, you know, trying to pick what I think other people are going to pick. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's too much of that going, so... I don't do that. I just yeah, I guess what I, I just don't and do I know that. that that's yeah. right. But it's yeah, not for me right. like firing those neurons and going, "Ooh, red fire engine. This is red, but that's a plane. Those are both transport modes of transportation." That for me is fun, you know. I got you. I Triggering got you. Triggering the brain. I mean, um. it, it can be fun for me, I guess. But when it gets into a group of people, uh, not so much. Because well. you play with those people. <laughs> There are many forms of Dixit. There's Dixit, Dixit 2, which is basically just an expansion for Dixit. Then there was Dixit Odyssey. Is that the third one? There's like four versions of Dixit. At, at, yeah, but they're all compatible, which is good, and they all essentially play the exact same way. Yeah. There's cards with really freaky artwork on them. Really freaky artwork. There are and, some cards with a... No, no, not some. They're all freaky artwork. They're all freaky, yes, thank you. <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're, they're the kind of artwork that I look at and I just go... They just, they're the kind of artwork that I look at for a while and just think about. And go, hmm, that's interesting. What was the person thinking when they did that? Mm -hmm. You don't think that? No. <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, I think... I think they're gorgeous. I really do. I think the cards are beautiful. Um, and anyway, so you play a card and you play it face down and you say whatever you want. You can say up from one word all the way to you know two paragraphs. And everyone else puts down a card that they think matches what you said. You mix them up and then everyone's trying to guess which one you did. Right. You want some people to get it. Preferably, you want only one person to get it. But you want some people to get it, not everyone. If everyone gets it, then everyone gets points except you. If no one gets it, some people will get points except you. Right. And if some people get it, but not everyone. You get points, they get points, and so on. It's yeah, it's a beautiful balance. You know, that rule is just ingenious. The fact that you need to be obscure, because if you're obvious, if you like have the card and you say, it's a massive chicken wearing a tutu, everybody gets it, it No, I think work. that's one of the cards. <laughs> it's probably at least one of them. Was this on your list? Yeah. This, so this was not list. on yours. You it's don't like it. Well, it's not that I don't necessarily... You're not feeling it? No. Uh, again, this is this is missing for me, and it's not because I don't see the good, the good goodness, the quality of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that. Um, I, I see why people have fun. I don't. I don't have fun at this. Um, normally, because maybe it's because I'm usually too precise. Okay. Um, and it's difficult for me to be imprecise. While being well, not being too vague. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'm a bad clue giver, also, but I enjoy the game. I'm a good clue giver, and too some, good. Some too of the other good. games. I'm a it's good a, clue giver. It's a donkey with six feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like being clever in this game. Just sometimes you're too clever for your own good. That's true, and then no one gets it. 
See, but I think we um, we like the same kind of party games in that we like those kind of ooh-ah philosophical sort of games. And Sam's more like, I don't want to deal with that. I love you know putting I mean? a, a Dixit card down and saying, this card reminds me of Sam Healy. Because oh. that totally changes the whole game. <laughs> because then you put the cards down and then you're like, why? Who, who, who put that down? Yeah. Why? Yeah. What? At that point, you're playing that mean game. What was that mean game called? Uh, uh, oh, uh, this is I know what you're talking about where it would say, who is the nicest person here? And everybody votes yeah, on that. Uh, do you remember that game? Yes. Yeah, I like to play this where you just, you cannot speak or do anything. But you have to make sounds. The clue has to be a sound. That's how I like to play. You played this with that? Yeah. And then you put a card down and it's always funny because there's always that one person who just can't do it. And they're like, okay, don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> and everybody just loses, you know what I mean? <laughs> don't they have to be like, okay, don't me. look at me, don't look at me, I have to get... Aww. <laughs> and then you're looking at your cards going, yeah, that helped. Um, <laughs> best one, you know? I've not played it with just the It's hilarious, sounds. it's hilarious. Alright, well anyway, it's Dixit, I think the newest version is this one, the Dixit Odyssey version, but I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I think this is the newest one. But any, you can get any of them, it will work fine. Illustrations is whisper down the alley with paper, and you know I posted a review of this recently, and some people were like, "I can just play that on pen and paper." Well, yeah, if you want to have 65 sheets of paper all over the place, this has really nice little flip books with erasable markers. It, it makes that game so easy to play. You got the big party pack, huh? Yeah, that really works with 12 people. One of the things that's great about Illustrations is it is a game that I don't know that I've ever played it ever where people tried to win. It was right. simply, this is simply an experience. No, I've, I've played in that game, and they kept score very carefully. And really? It was really boring. Wow. Yeah. Because... See, this is one game where I would never keep score. No, there's I refused it. They're scoring. You know, they, they invented rules for that, but ignore that. This well, game, even the rules say you can ignore that. You need to play and laugh and, ha -ha, and then wipe it down and keep move on. Just, you know, people who try to play this game... More seriously than it warns is can can make it not so funny, but as far as laugh factor, oh oh I this know game, what you've done. This game, <laughs> it, it, biggest laughs I've probably gotten from a party game in a long long time. Yeah, this and is one a really one fantastic. we'll talk about a little later, which also does it for me at least in the groups I've played, big laughs. But this one right up there. Yeah, and then this works in youth group. It works in. This is one of those games that works in almost any situation. You say I can't draw. No one cares because no one can draw anyway. And if you can't draw, it's even funnier then because the person who's guessing what you just drew will get something ridiculously wrong, which will just snowball. Right. It's it's a fantastic game, one I will always keep in my collection. I want to hear what Sam has to say on this. I've actually never played the game. Oh, you haven't? No, no I you'll haven't. have to. I, I, I think this is one that you would I, like. I, I will probably enjoy it from, from your description of it. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a Pictionary with the fun back in it. You know what I yeah. mean? Gotcha. And that's... I think right, that's well, fair. because Pictionary, though, you are required to draw well. To do well, Pictionary. Right, right. In this one, if you draw poorly, it that's adds fine. to the fun. That's fine, right. All right, Telestrations! Boulder Dash itself was a great game, and I would, you know, beyond Boulder Dash for me, just takes it to the next level. Yeah, Boulder Dash was is a game that was taken from a it's like the dictionary, dictionary game yeah. where you had a word that no one knew what it meant, and everyone writes down a definition, and you mix them up, and you try to guess which one's the right definition. This one though took it a step further, where it would have uh, it would have initials, and you would try to guess what those initials stood for, or a date, and you would say what happened on that date, or right. a person, what did that person do. Or my favorite, which was movies. Oh, movies! Um, <laughs> and you, it would, it, you would get a name of a movie, like a B or C movie, and then you had to write the plot of it. Although go. now that I've been running through this lately with the kids, I've gone through like six of them, and I'm like, I, I've, I've seen that movie, but really? I feel bad for having seen the movie because <laughs> it's in the game. But the movie plots are hilarious because sometimes the most idiotic answer is the right one. Right. And the problem with Boulder Dash games which is why it's not the highest game on my party list, is because almost every game I've ever played with fun people 
has degenerated where people aren't even trying anymore. They're just trying to write answers to make everybody else laugh. That's okay. Does that well, bother you? No, it's, that doesn't bother me, but there's another game that's higher up on this list that I think takes that idea and runs with it better. It bothers you, Sam? It bothers me. Yeah. Why? Uh, well, uh, for example, apples to apples. I was saying earlier, yeah, yeah. It, it, it gets to the point, at some point, where people are just... Um, they stop keeping their cards secret. They just start showing their cards to people, laughing at because... It's an inside joke between the two of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, please don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with people having fun. Sounds like it. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that if, if we're going to be playing the party game... Then let's play. Then let's play the party game and have fun with it, yeah. But let's stick to the parameters that the game sets up. Well, you're not technically breaking the parameters. Mm -hmm. the well, you are. You're showing when, your cards. Like no, but then this one... When I'm it, saying people start writing stuff that's so stupid that you know someone wrote it. Yes, yes, yes. Has that happened in games no, you Absolutely, played? every game probably. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. If, I, if, if the game devolves into such absurdity that I am, you know, and, and the game literally stops, but it stops because I'm falling out of my chair laughing, I'm okay with that. I think it did its job, you know? Yeah. This is the game that I was talking about that... Um, we talked about telestrations where... Um, what was I talking about? You don't keep score? Where you don't keep score, and it just like gives you such big laughs. And this one, I keep score. It's got the track so that the game ends logically, but for laughs, just for, for... I mean, if that's the barometer there, if that's the scale, this would have to be number one. It is very group-dependent, though. That's I have true, played Beyond Boulder with, Dash you know, with some people, people before where it was like... Yeah, let's move on to another game. Yeah. Apples to Apples, you can play with almost anybody. You pull apples, apples, do, do, do. Beyond Bowed Ash, you, and you'll get people who will write two word answers, and it's, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I hear you. But, I mean, again, for me, this is my own personal experience. Number one in Big Laughs, this game right here. Hmm. It used to be my number one in Big Laughs, but another game e eclipsed it in laughter. And we'll get to that. It's not Eclipse, is it? No. <laughs> eclipse, the party game. This one is a cheat, and the reason it's a cheat is because Faces is an actual game from Buffalo Games, it's out of print, but we took Faces and we made our own personal version. <clears throat> well, I made By it. we, he means him. Okay, now look, there. I've done a lot of garbagey things. In fact, just before we recorded this, Sam was critiquing gently my painting skills. <laughs> you asked me. No, no, no. Well, I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying I'm not good at painting. Okay. Do we do we agree on that? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. But I think that I put together a pretty good set of faces. Yes, guys. you did. Um, and so faces we play basically the same as apples apples, except they're faces. And what happens though in this game? Unlike apples apples in this game, the the attempts to influence the judge become more riotous as the game goes by. Right. You say, look at that guy. He is most definitely a mass murderer. You can so tell. It, you can see the twinkle in his is eye. Is it known which one's yours? Or do you reveal really no, no, they're mixed up. Right now, you turn them over. They're, you have a category of cards, and you, you pull it out, and I'll say, uh, which one is getting married right now? And so... <laughs> that guy, clearly. <laughs> or which one is the one who will walk 500 miles just to be with you? Or the one who's telling you a joke? Aww. And so people pick those cards from their hand, and they'll put them down, and then whoever's card gets picked okay. gets a point. Gotcha. But it, it, again... It, you you kind of keep score at the end, but it's more about trying to get people to yeah, pick the one. Yeah. And it is my goal, before 2013 is over, to find this a publisher for this game. Because it's out of print. I will get this republished somehow, some way. Because I like it that much. The original set of the, the, the original, I guess, base game, before Tom went hog wild with it, uh, actually had a lot of really cool faces. It did, it just didn't have enough of them. Yeah, there, there, was there like were very, faces there were very few. So uh, after a few plays, you've probably seen most of the faces. Right. Right. So <clears throat> going, uh, going and doing what Tom did and adding faces and having cards made was a way to give it more longevity. But uh, the, the base game had a lot of funny looking faces and, and, and that's where it hit stride for me. It's because... You put your card out there, and I can't stop laughing at my own card. Mm -hmm. 
And, of course, I'm laughing at everybody else's, too. I don't care if my card gets picked. Yeah, but I love to try to get the person to pick my card by arguing either for my card, yeah. sometimes arguing for someone else's card, you know, just yeah. saying... To, to, to kind of bluff them into picking You them. like this one, Sam, right? Yes. Okay. See this one? <laughs> now, don't email me, folks, and say, how, <laughs> can, the, how can I get... I for that to sound weird. How can I get a copy of this? Because I made all these well, through ArtsCal custom cards things, and it was not cheap. And it was a lot of work to make the pictures the right size. And I stole them all off the internet, so we're not selling this. <laughs> you're, for all you know, your picture is in this game. <laughs> Am I in this game? Well, yes. I remember it. Yes, that one. It's that mass murder. Right right Mugshot. All right. Moving on. This game's not in Z's list, and I really I'm, I, I want to hear an explanation because say anything is that game that I you know we talked about Beyond yeah. Baldur's where you write stupid stuff and it devolves the game and say anything writing stupid stuff could actually win you the game. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I liked it for that reason. Have you even played this one? Yeah, yeah, I played. I played lots. I, I and this one also for me kicks apples apples to the curb. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, apples apples wouldn't even make didn't make my top ten list because say anything is on it. Yes. So well, I put apples apples. At I believe it was number ten on my list, simply because of its uh, mass appeal. Okay, that's and, true. And, Anybody can play and, apples. And it's apples. very much like this, so it would be not a bash on you, but it would be kind of hypocritical to include this game and not apples to apples because they're so similar. I don't think they're that that's similar. Like I think they're very me. similar. Yeah, but in this game, you get to pick what you write. In apples to apples, you have a hand of five cans. But it's sponsors. played the same way. True, but I think that that is a big change. How many times you play apples apples since someone said, "All oh, my cards are stupid." Yeah. I've heard that a lot in this no, game. I at least that voice, though, which is why this. All oh, my cards are stupid. Really? <laughs> <laughs> which is why this game eclipses uh, apples to apple. I know. If it eclipses on this list, list, we're gonna have an issue. No, too. we're. It's not. It's not. It will not be on any list unless it's. Okay. No, no. But the problem with Later. this one also is if you you do. I have played this game with people who are like I don't I don't know what to write. Just like, write something. Yes. And then they'll finally write something, and someone else has already written it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, but I was erase it, and write again. Yeah. You play with children, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. Again, it, it was probably on, on my shirt list. I like it. I have it. I still have kept it. Yeah. I don't like that. You know whose response is is which. Like, I don't like that you know this is my answer because you can it can lead to some favoritism. You know what I mean? It can, but because of the betting aspect, it's not so much about picking that person's answer as in trying to get people... People are trying to guess which answer you picked. I don't know. I've always played it kind of with a... maybe like an honor code to where if, for example, let's say... Uh, Billy Joe Jim Bob over there, you don't like him very much at all, and you've de you've kind of decided in the back of your mind that I'm not going to pick whatever he puts on the cart. But if he puts what you actually think would be the answer to whatever the category is, you got to pick his. Right. You got to be truthful. There has there has to be some type of truth truth element to it. That's I know how, people. That's how I, I know I've people that played. we have both played with who don't care about that sort of thing. I know, but I mean, I, I that that's how I usually. Teach people to do it. Right. One last thing. This game is very open ended. And I have played in games that have mm -hmm. really devolved. <laughs> On the back here, the question that they have is if I could have a big anything, what would it be? And the answers are bank account, diamond ring from George Clooney, Circle of Friends, Beach House in Hawaii, or Army of Monkeys. I promise you that in many groups, the answers you would get for that question well, could be quite different. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just take that in mind. Be Quick careful. Though. Be careful. I don't have Wits and Wagers, which is our number two, because it's at my youth group right now, or it's somewhere else, or I'm constantly running around the country uh, doing it at conventions. Dice Tower Convention, Wits and Wagers game! Almost, what he's saying is he doesn't keep track too, huh? of this game very well. <laughs> Do you have it? Yes. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Right. So. No, I don't have yours. I have my own. Oh, you have your own. Yeah. You have your I own? I have my own. You can't have it. He doesn't keep track of his games. Wah, wah, wah. Well, no. Wits and Wagers 
I like it as a game between seven people. It works really well. Yeah. But Wits and Wakers as a giant game yeah. is one of the best party games in existence. I it's it's amazingly fun. It is um it's a trivia game where you don't have to know the answer. Like Price is Right, you know, someone will ask a question with a number, you know, how many, what, you know, what percentage of Americans own monkeys, and you will, everyone will write down an answer, put it in the middle, they'll organize them, and then you bid on which one you think is the best. It's probably like 0 0.02 yeah. or something. I have two monkeys, does that count as a... <laughs> Please don't talk about your family. Okay, now, but... Okay. Was that phone gun? <laughs> <laughs> Phone guns is coming out. All right, that was rude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's not. The <laughs> I lost totally track of thought there, but it's a good game. Wow, I really lost my train. But, it's, it's, but, it's, but it's, is a good. It's not game. even full sentence. Is a good anymore. game. Monkey family can't speak. No, I haven't even met your family. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're right. I understand what you're saying. I. I usually these days play it with uh, in classes in a classroom setting. Yes, it works really well. And it goes well over there. very well. I've actually not had a lot of luck playing this game in a in an actual party atmosphere. It does. I think it's because it's not silly enough. Yeah, you're you right. Know what it, I mean, it's, it's like when I play it at a party and it comes out, the mood seems to dampen a bit. Yeah. And I think it's because everybody's going, oh, I need to come up with a decent answer for that. Oh, I guess too, too bad. Yeah, but play it as a you know? game show? I'm telling you, it's com you, right. played it, you played it mine, right? I haven't. I was, I was going to last year and I missed it. I was doing something fun, probably. <laughs> oh! Burn the vessel! Missed it! See? One, one, one insult and then I get, get burned for the rest of the game. <laughs> but um, I like to say anything more than it from the same company and say anything came out a little later because I think it is more up and ended, uh, open ended and it is more fun. It, it kind of puts the fun out there for you and this one you kind of have to look for it a little bit. You know? But again, that's my thought. I don't think it was on my list, but it was. I keep it, I have it, it's, it I enjoy it. All right. It was on my list. We have I've had great, great fun playing this game uh, a number of different ways. We used it in the youth group, used it in church gatherings. We played it at conventions. It really has versatility. It has a lot of good longevity, too. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Time for the number one. I mean, it's fun. Why wasn't this on your list? You gotta give a good reason. Cause this is this is such an awesome party game. Mm, no. I'm an actor and charades doesn't really do it for me. This isn't charades. But this isn't yes, charades. It is. it, it's partially charades, but it's about being This is not charades. What is this? I'm an actor, so charades doesn't do it for me. You can do that a lot. It works, so it's like I really mean, you know, training anyway, but so I don't know. I don't mm, I don't know, I don't like it that much. It's okay. It's funny. It's, it's, I enjoy watching it more than doing it. Well, that's true. It's really funny to watch other people do it. Yes. This is this is also a divorce possibility. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Okay. Well, I've seen some spouses yell at each other when I listen back to what I did. Time's up. <laughs> Lawyer recall. <laughs> There's the, this is the Time's Up title recall. The original Time's Up was people. This one is books and song titles. This one is much better, I think. Movie titles, too. And movie titles, because people know... Or at least you can figure these out while if you have uh, Joe Fukumukaluka, that's hard to try to get his last name pronounced. I bet you couldn't pronounce that the same way again. You don't. You haven't seen his movies? Mm -mm. He's great. Really? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> All right, but Time's Up is a game that the first time we played this, I, I, I still remember the first time we played this, uh, was uh, Sam and his wife, my, me and my wife and another couple, this was over a decade ago probably yeah. now, where we played this and just the... The, we started playing it, and the, the back and forth, and then only giving one word, mm -hmm. and then the actions where my wife was acting, snorting cocaine, and I didn't even know she knew how to do that, you know? Well, she doesn't, apparently, but... <laughs> this, is, this, this, this part of the video is not going to play back very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it'll be fine. I love you, Lara. Okay, but the, the, the fact is, I have... Falling out of my chair laughing at this game. It is, they're just, the, some of the moments in this game, and some of the funniest moments are when people give the wrong clue about the wrong person, yeah. 
and the person that they're partners with gets it right, yep. and so that wrong clue becomes the clue for that person the rest of the game. Right. And that, to me, is just hilarious. <laughs> See, another thing I don't like about it, which I, you just reminded me of, is that I tend to not like party games that you have to draw a card, and every now and then you'll have that one moment where you draw a card, and the person looks at it and goes, I don't know who that is. I just don't know who that is. Or what movie that was, or any, I just don't know. Yeah, but at least so in then this one, if you don't know the title of the movie, so let's say I draw The, Invention of, the Adventures of Captain Underpants. You could... You could hopefully act that out, you know. Right, but five words. Like Adventures basically, those like Underpants. you know, like wits and wagers gets around that. They were ingenious enough to get around that problem when you draw a card and you go, "I just, I just don't know what that is." Hmm. But this game buys right into that, and I don't like that. I don't like that you have the possibility of playing with a mixed group, a group that comes from different cultures that simply won't get it, just won't know who that is won't know what that represents. You know, Cranium runs into that problem on on a third of the cards. I, I try to hit that off at the pass when I'm teaching the game uh, and, and simply tell them there's going to be cards that you're not going to know mm -hmm. who it is, what it is, whatever. So you have to go word by word. Yeah, but at all Get them to say that the first word first, round. then this word, and then that word, and then once you've got them to say those, you're done. Right. So you, you just have to kind of set them up for that because it's gonna hap it's gonna happen. So you let them know it's gonna happen. Prepare for it. Right. Well, the reason this one's number one is because Sam and I both had it ranked very high. I think this was your number two, and this was my number one. Right. Right. And so that's why it hit number one on the list. It's a yeah. great game, even though Z doesn't appreciate it. Party games. Um, so I, I think they're underappreciated in gaming. Doom. Yeah, they do get a lot of sort of upturned noses, you know, and I think that. Party games are such a such an essential category of gaming. It, it, it really is the does the ultimate job in gaming, which is bringing people together to have a good time. I'll say this: I think someone who designs a good party game has worked just as hard as someone who's designed, say, Twilight Imperium Three. I think the same. I mean, yeah, Twilight Imperium Three might take longer, but I respect the art, artistic genius that goes into a party game. I really do. Uh, I know that you're not a huge fan of party games, but I think, I think they're very important because when someone comes to my house and they've never played games, these are the kind of games I can play with them, and I don't want to be like, what, you like this sort of game? Well, I'm sorry, right, sir. Right. Here, the lowest game we play is Ticket to Ride, and if you can't reach that level, then be gone. I mean, party games are the games, when there's a party going on, these are the games I bring out. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that. I, I, I have, I wish you would have explained your equality of artsmanship or artistry a little bit better though because I cannot say with a straight face that the person who designed this is on the same level as the person who designed Twilight Imperium 3. That's just, that's ridiculous in my in my. Ah, but that, there that's are the so way many feel. different, I mean this, this is like, this is like stick figures and Twilight Imperium 3 is a Monet or a Picasso. Just because it, it has more parts doesn't mean it's better. No, but it's definitely harder to design. I don't know. I think it's really hard to design a simple, fun party. Because when we go over every year, you know, we, have, we just did the Dice Tower nominations. Mm -hmm. It was really hard to come up with five party games that came out in 2012 that were worthy of voting on. Yeah, but I think that's largely because that category is looked down upon and people put out fewer party games. No, there's a lot put out in the mass market. People don't care there. They have no snobbery there. There's a lot of cannibalism when it comes to that, too, so you have a lot of really th bad ones that just kind of get rehashed. You know? That's true. That's I, true. I, I think the genre is flooded. That's that's why we have trouble. Yeah, but it's flooded with bad games. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Whereas the other genre... I can genres, say that about Euros. I feel that way about Euros. Euros yeah. are flooded with bad, <laughs> samey Euros. You know? All right, well, we're devolving here. But I think that there's some companies... Are in our I agree games. with both of you. I understand what you're both saying. I understand what he's saying. It takes more hours to design a massive space war game yeah. than this. But I think what Tom was trying to say is that there is just as much beauty in getting this right as there is in getting a big, massive game with lots of moving parts to move well. If you're the guy who puts something in a box and you can almost on command get a group to laugh at what you did and enjoy themselves, that's beautiful. I think I almost would rather have invented 
Time's Up or Apples Apples or Dixit than Puerto Rico or Eclipse or k mm -hmm. or I'll agree with you on all three of those. Twilight Imperium. No, I won't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sam's party game, baby. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, that's it this time for party games. Next time we're talking about uh, ten tips for game publishers. We're gonna be we're gonna be helpful to game better publishers. Better listen. You better <laughs> listen. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, and I'm Sam Healy. And you've been watching the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.